Hey everybody, it's Evan Easton and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how we can make a Tom Mish type beat inside of Ableton. Tom Mish is a UK musician, singer and producer. His music can be described as a mix of R&B, jazz and hip hop. Um, and he's also not shy about the influence of legendary beat maker Jay Dilla on his productions. Now obviously Tom Mish is a guitar player so a lot of his music incorporates jazzy and smooth guitar parts. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so right now we're inside of Ableton. I want to make something a little bit more up-tempo, so I'm going to set my BPM to 160. So, like I said, a lot of his music incorporates guitar parts, so I'm going to be starting with recording some guitar. Electric guitar. So, Tom Mish often uses ninth and seventh chords, which are chords that are a bit more jazzy. I came up with this progression. which is a G major 9 going into an F sharp minor 9 going into an E minor 9. Now I'm also going to uh, record a B section. So this is a B minor 9 going into an A major 9 going into a G major 7 descending to a G minor major 7. Alright, so now I've got these two guitar parts, I'm just going to edit them and clean them up. So now I've got it synced to the beat, I'm just going to add some processing. So first of all, let's add some EQ. Compression. So for amp simulation, I'm going to use Archetype, the Corey Wong edition. Turn off the reverb. Uh, Let's add some saturation, J37 by Waves. Slab delay. Some more saturation. Okay, so now I've got my guitar going, uh, I'm just going to add some drums. Layer the rim with the snare. Add some more depth. Alright, so next I'm going to be adding some live hats. So, just going to insert an audio track. I've got this stereo pair going. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna record some hats here. So I'm gonna record an open hat here. I'm gonna put snare buzz on the kick. Waves factory plugin. I'm gonna add an additional head on every off beat just to get it more into pocket. All right, so now I've got my drums. I'm gonna group these. And I'm just going to add some processing. Uh, I like little radiator. Should, a nice saturation plugin. Use it sparingly though. I like this plugin called DS10. It's by Excellent Audio. Add some room reverb. Alright, so next I'm going to be adding some bass. I'm just going to record this DI. I'm going to be adding CLA bass by Waves. It's a great plugin for bass guitar. So I'm just going to add some processing to this. I'm actually going to be adding a gate. So it's uh, in between all the quiet parts. It's actually uh, shutting down the audio. EQ. Decapitator Let's add some uh, vinyl crackle I chain this to the kick. All 
right, so next I'm going to be adding a second guitar. This is going to be a wah guitar because Tom Mish often uses wah pedals. Um, I don't have a wah pedal myself, but Archetype by Corey Wong has some nice presets. Alright, so next I'm going to be making a synth, and I'm going to be making the signature Tom Mish synth, uh, and I'm going to do this in Serum. Okay, so right now we're in Serum. First of all, I'm going to change the wavetable to the DS saw and triangle. It's sort of a mix between a saw and a triangle wavetable, and it sounds like this. Next, I'm going to be changing the envelope settings here. So I'm going to increase the attack a bit, increase my decay, and I'm going to turn the sustain all the way down. Now this sounds a bit too harsh, so I'm going to play with the uh, filter settings here. I'm going to choose this one, which is a low pass filter. But I think that's way too much, so I'm going to link my envelope settings to the cutoff. I'm just gonna play with this. Next, I'm gonna assign the LFO to the fine pitch. But that's obviously way too much, so I'm gonna decrease it. So it's adding more of a vibrato effect. Next, I'm going to be linking the LFO to the mix of the filter. <laughs> Add just a tiny bit. Next, I'm going to be adding some noise. I'm going to be adding the J60 noise. Then I'm going to go to oscillator A. I'm going to set this to FM noise. I'm going to turn the level down all the way at the noise section. I'm just going to increase this knob. So it's kind of making it a bit more dirty. All right, next I'm going to go to the effects tab and I'm just going to add some EQ, just a high pass filter. Lastly, I'm just going to go back to the oscillator tab. I'm going to set my unison to three. I'm going to detune it a little bit. So it's a bit wider. So let's play some keys. So I'm going to add one more melodic element. I'm going to be adding some strings. Tom Mish actually plays the violin. So I'm going to be adding some strings. I'm going to add a contact library. So let's make a new MIDI track here and open up contact. I like this Stradivari uh, cello library. I'm going to add a very simple part, just playing one single note. All 
Right, I'm gonna group these and I'm gonna make a new audio track and record this to audio. Uh, I'm just gonna pan them. Let's record this to audio. Just gonna delete this group, name this strings, makes everything a bit more orderly. Now I'm gonna process this. Uh, let's add some EQ. Don't want it to be that upfront. And I'm actually going to sidechain this to the kick. I just want it to be more of an ambient element, uh, you know, to fill the mix up rather than being very upfront. All right, so I'm actually hearing some overlap between the synth and the strings. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to load up Pro-Q3 by Fab Filter on the synth. So I'm seeing it's kind of um, living in this range, in this frequency uh, range. So sort of 200 hertz to uh, 2500. Okay, so I'm going to uh, drag this copy of Pro-Q3 to the strings and I'm gonna go into sidechain and I'm gonna sidechain my synth to to the strings so so now I'm gonna act actually um, decrease the frequency spectrum of the synth on my strings channel so I'm gonna set it to dynamic mode so now whenever my synth is playing the strings are ducking in that frequency range so without it So right now the synth is a little bit more audible. 